Hey everyone, today I'd like to explore with you five exciting new projects and tools to keep an eye on in the coming months. The criteria for these are as follows. First, these are projects that I'm genuinely excited about using someday. Second, they're projects that for some reason or another are not quite ready for prime time. And I'd like to look at what these projects and tools are trying to solve and to answer the question why are they interesting let's dive right in now electron and cordova have basically the same premise take web code bundle it with a browser and make that an application electron for windows and mac and cordova on mobile but neither of these tools are particularly popular among developers but there is a tool with rising popularity that is targeting the same use case. That first project on my list is called Tori. It's rapidly gaining traction as an efficient way to create desktop apps using web development tools. It's coded using Rust, and because it doesn't bundle a browser, it's lighter and more efficient than Electron. And a month ago, the Tori team announced that they're working on supporting mobile platforms as a build target. The feature is still in alpha and the documentation is, well, uh, spotty at best. But Tori has been going from strength to strength and I'm curious as to how they will impact the mobile development world. Will this go the way of Electron and Cordova or will it take the path of React Native and Flutter? But if it does take hold, it might well be the perfect project to learn more about programming in Rust. And so the first project that I'll be keeping an eye on is Tori's mobile capabilities. Now. I have a problem. I'm greedy. I want my websites to be as fast as possible, but I also want to be able to understand what my users are doing. But all the third-party JavaScript libraries slow everything down. Even Google's Lighthouse tool tells you off for using Google Analytics. However, it looks like there might be a solution on the way. You see, the issue with third-party scripts like Google Analytics is that while the browser is busy interpreting their code, it's slowing the rest of the page down because everything is competing for the same resources. But what if there was a way to isolate them, to separate the two, as if the third-party scripts were run in a separate thread, in a separate process? That is the promise of the second tool, Party Town. It moves third-party scripts to the web worker, which is effectively like running them on a separate thread. It does have its challenges, of course, because third-party scripts expect to be able to interact with the main thread, so to speak. And the tool still has some rough edges, which is why it's still in beta. However, as the tool matures, I very much think I'll be adopting it as a way to lighten the load on my web pages and to speed them up. Let's see how that goes. Now, another world that fascinates me is low or no-code solutions. I've recently discovered a strange beast, a no-code solution that you can code. Or to phrase things differently, workflow automation that's open source. This tool, the third on our list, is called N8N. It's an alternative to Zapier or to Automate.io that you can host on your servers and extend. So basically, a no-code solution that you can code in. I'm very tempted to set this up at work to help my less technologically gifted colleagues to be autonomous. Now, will it be safer and faster to code automations instead of pushing them through NA10? Probably, but it might allow us to prototype stuff. I'm gonna keep an eye on it, see if there are any use cases that it might fit. Another weird and wonderful tool I'll be keeping my eye on is actually from the same company as Party Town and Quick. The fourth project on this list is called Mitosis. Its promise is to create components that you can compile to different frameworks like React or Solid or Svelte and more. It looks like it's still in the early stages though, but since I dabble in so many frameworks because of this channel, I'm wondering if it might not be useful to keep an eye on it. In any case, I find the concept fascinating. We'll see if I actually find a good use case for it though. Now, of all the applications on my computer, the one where I spend the most of my time after Visual Studio Code and the browser is actually the terminal. And I've recently discovered a tool called Warp. It isn't available yet on PC or on Linux, which explains its inclusion on this list. Warp is coded in Rust, and it adds useful functionality to the terminal. For example, when using Git, it will show an autocomplete based on which files have been modified. It's highly customizable. You can add workflows to it. Now, I'm still learning what it can do, but it provides interesting improvements to one of the staples of my development workflow. 
And if you follow me at all, and you should, of course, click on the subscribe button, you know that I'm all about the quality of developer experience. And to keep exploring the theme, well, I'll see you in the next video.